Having lived on a 30-foot sailboat for five years without hot water, an indoor shower, air conditioning, or even headroom for Jordan, we normally aren't even aware of what we're missing. Hey, morning, bud. Morning. Boy, that's a pretty spot you got there. I know. You sure you want to live on a boat? <laughs> but after living in the States for a month, with all of the luxuries of middle America, a part of me wondered if I'd still want to live in such a small boat. Would Atticus still feel like home? Oh, she's still floating. Yeah, it is good news. What you doing there, bud? Oh, trying to stave off depression. <laughs> this is one of those low moments. So we'll get Atticus back to normal and she'll feel like like home again. You want an encouragement, Pound? Encouragement! Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. Recently, we left Atticus in Bocas del Toro, Panama and flew to the United States on a mission to bring back the materials and supplies necessary to refit Atticus in preparation for our biggest challenge yet, crossing the Pacific Ocean. Hey, good morning, guys. Well, uh, as you can tell, we are not on Atticus right now. Um, well, let me show you where we are. Ben? What's going on there, bud? Just enjoying this view. Yeah, without, no like, kidding. Like, freaking out. <laughs> Not used to being so high. We are in Panama City, uh, and we are at a really cool apartment. Uh, one of our viewers, Hector Vega, thank you so much, is letting us stay here for a couple of days while we get ahead on an episode, and then use this kind of as our staging ground to repack all of our stuff to get back to the boat so we can start tackling our projects. And we have 200 pounds of stuff <laughs> that we need to fit in all these bags and take with us back to Atticus. There's three ways that we can bring stuff onto this little airplane. We can personal items, bring those onto the plane with us, but they have to weigh four kilos or less. Then we can check a bag each, but that bag can only weigh 14 kilos. And then everything else beyond that, we just have to pay per kilo. So right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get exactly 14 kilograms into our checked bags. And we're at about 13 kilos. So I think if I just throw these in there. What are we at? There you go. 14.2. Nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's acceptable. Yeah, I'll just smile. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So we're at the air cargo office. You think that's enough stuff, bud? I think we need more. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know where it's gonna go on that. <laughs> well, almost there, bud. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully all our stuff gets there. Yeah. I'm nervous. <laughs> I know, I'm nervous too. You miss boat? I miss boat. There's the canal. That's where it will be in a couple of months. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, let's uh Let's hope our stuff is all here. Yeah. All right, we got all of our stuff. We got a cab. Muchas gracias. Gracias. <laughs> Good luck to have a boat. Okay. Gracias. Almost there. We're minutes away from being done with this whole ordeal. <laughs> Still floating. <laughs> yeah, it is good news. Oh. How's everything look? Oh. What? Mm. 
So I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I'm not getting electricity to a lot of the lights and stuff. Um, the fridge has got electricity. How does it smell? <laughs> it is not very cold. That's what we get for leaving Atticus too long. Shit. It looks like the little breaker here for our shore power uh, tripped. So then we weren't charging the batteries from the shore power. And then I guess the solar panels just didn't keep up with the refrigerator. Our house bank is just dead. But right now I've got this stuff running on the uh, starter battery. Mm. Anyway, let's get some air in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In there, bud. Oh, trying to stave off depression. <laughs> There's just mold all over the place. And it just smells like it's got that terrible musky kind of smell in here. It's so depressing to like come back here and like we've been living in families' houses and that Airbnb and our friend's house in Panama City, like all these nice places, and, and then it's like this like dose of reality <laughs> i don't mind atticus being small that much but it's when it's small and hot and humid and moldy and like i'm worried about our electrical system like are we gonna be able to run all the fans all night oh man this is one of those low moments yeah, so. for now i'm gonna keep trying to kill as much mold as i can <laughs> well the nice thing about living on a boat for five years is that always got canned goods so I made a totally canned good meal we've just got pasta with a little bit of pesto sauce tomatoes canned chicken can you believe like eight hours ago we were in like a fancy apartment in Panama City just beckoning I know <laughs> what's cool about humans is that we're so adaptable but I think we got used to houses and air conditioning and smoothly running systems <laughs> so mm -hmm. i think we're just tired also you know we'll get atticus back to normal and she'll feel like like home again yeah you want encouragement pound encouragement <laughs> Good morning. How's morale today, bud? I think yours is up, and I'm just dreading all the work we have to do. It's because you have to go into town <laughs> yeah, to go shopping. I hate going Every into time town. she has to go sh like grocery shopping, <laughs> she just like gets into this terrible mood. Yeah, I just dread <laughs> it. And then I go, and it's fun. But yeah. Every time. Although we weren't expecting to have to do this, we're just gonna take the next two days and just do a deep cleaning of Atticus. And that'll help us to figure out where the heck we're gonna put all that stuff. <laughs> I don't know where we're gonna put it. Well, it'll be nice, because we do have a lot of stuff that's kind of like breaking down, yeah. you know? So we can just donate all the stuff that's basically on its way out. <laughs> but to help us get through the next couple of days, I think we're gonna need a little bit of help. So I think it's time for an 80s montage. Okay, next step is to fix a little bit of a leak that we've got with our toilet. So when we arrived to the boat last night, we started pumping the, the little hand pump on the toilet, saw that there was water 
coming up out of the shaft seal. Luckily, I've got a spare, not only do I have a spare shaft seal, I've actually got a spare seal housing. So hopefully I can just unscrew the old one and then screw this right on. I used to get really grossed out fixing the toilet on Atticus, but over time I have learned to come to terms with just getting poop on my hands. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take everything out of these bags, organize it all, figure out where we're gonna put it, and then just attack one of those spaces at a time. You know, it feels kinda good to like reorganize the boat. Okay, bud, how'd you do? Well, that wasn't too bad, actually. So right now we've got all of our stuff organized into piles. Sort of. So we've got all of our project stuff here. We've got the stuff that we're gonna donate there. We've got our electronics, galley stuff, and tools over there. Tools and spares, and some just general materials like nuts and bolts and stuff. Next step is gonna be most difficult. We're gonna basically go through our existing storage compartments, empty them out, and then re pack them and, that's and clean just, them and clean them and that's just something that we have to do living on such a small boat every storage space is like gold <laughs> and they slowly get worse and worse over time yeah exactly yeah. so what you doing down there bud yeah besides sweating my butt off i am going through all of our fasteners that we have right now and they're just scraps of all kinds of random stuff mm -hmm. and you um, don't know what's stainless steel or not right it's all stainless but a lot of it's not 316. Yeah. in fact most of it's probably not mm -hmm. and a lot of it's junk too mm -hmm. that i just don't eat i mean this is literally the leftovers from every project we've done over the last five years mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to transfer it all into here. Mm -hmm. And this can be like the relatively random crap. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> because I need to make room for all of these. <laughs> these are all 316 stainless. I mean, just about every size I could need. And this has been one of the last just totally disorganized storage spaces that I have where I've not inventoried it. It's just like the freaking Wild West down here. And so I'm finally just taking it all out. I'm gonna reorganize it, getting rid of a bunch of crap, and then put stuff back in there. So we've had minor patches of mold here and there on Atticus, but it's never been a real problem. Um, it got real bad when we left the boat in the tropics in the heat closed up. We're just gonna try to nip it in the bud. I always feel like it's wrestling some kind of wild animal doing these. All right, nice and shiny, these ones. Looks good, bud. <laughs> Almost there. Right. Well, we cleaned up the cockpit. It was beautiful. And then I destroyed it by putting all of my sewing gear everywhere. <laughs> So I've been meaning to inventory all of my sewing stuff and I haven't done it yet. So I'm gonna just sit down and do that now. And just to show you, this is where it's been hiding for the last couple years. Basically with so little space on Atticus, we've converted our only hanging locker into more storage. Less than ideal, but it works. People ask us how we handle living full-time on a 30-foot sailboat. At the end of the day, home is what you make it. If you roll up your sleeves and put your heart into your living space, even a 30-foot sailboat can feel like home. And the great thing about Atticus is that our front yard is always changing. Hey guys, 
guys. Hope you enjoyed hanging out with us on Atticus this week. We wanted to give a shout out to some of our brand new deckhand level patrons. So we've got David Lebowski, Lo and Steph, Liz and Dimps, Terry Hines. Sorry, we've got some people working on the dock. So we've also got Sandra Renwick, Scuba Sloth, and Jonas Troyer, Robert Swenson, and John Bechtel. We also have Ron Pearson, and John and Kathy Barrett, Gary and Tammy Hamilton, and Counting Stars, Kevin and Cara, Becky Wagaman, and Jason Birchfield, Matt Jones, and Andrew Wilmot. And finally, we got Neil LaFrance and Thomas Parker. So thanks guys for joining us this week and thank you so much for your support. It's because of you guys that we can put so much time and effort and love into these episodes. So besides that, we will catch you guys next Thursday.